Well, today we are bringing to you uh, um, Jim McFarland, who is the owner and founder of Zoning Resources. J Jim is a um, brings a lot of experience from ministry and the marketplace um, in zoning and and job equipping ministries. And um, we're just glad to have him here. He is a, a, a close friend and a noble leader in the um, regional outreach and partnerships for Noble today. And this is certainly a passion of his, and I'm sure it'll be a very rewarding experience for all of us today. Thank you, Ms. Susie. All right. Well, thanks a lot. I know that this is a um, either an exciting topic or a terribly boring topic or a scary topic. Um, but it's something that I've always been very just passionate about, very interested in. And I'm going to walk through some of my own experience with this and part of my own story of getting to this point of, of receiving a professional coach and all of the stuff I had to go through to deal with that. Um, so to start with, my wife and I met in school in Arkansas back in the early 90s, and we were trying to discern where to move next. We didn't want to live in the South forever. And I used this book from Richard Bowles called What Colors Your Parachute. And next to the Bible at that time, I thought it was the most practical, effective method to help discern um, not just really the calling, but about what do you want, what am I going to do with myself, with my life? I had a degree in human resources management. A, and a double degree in vocational ministry, as well as a master's in science of education. So um, I had a, a job offer with the University of Arkansas um, when I first graduated as a research assistant. And I had uh, eventually turned that job down and accepted a, a job with a staffing company, thinking that it was a better fit because it was more in line with my degree. And so uh, I found out with it, a year later that it was not a good fit and it wasn't what I should have been doing. And it was a very frustrating first ex exit out of college, losing a job and being newly married and trying to decide where to move next. And through this book, What Colors Your Parachute, we looked at Portland, Oregon, Houston, Texas, Lynchburg, Virginia, and Indianapolis, Indiana as places to move. And we discerned uh, through this book the qualities and features about where to move that would make the best sense. And it helped us to really navigate the different options and opportunities that would be important to us. So I still would recommend it. The neat thing about this book is it, it's been around since the 70s and it's updated every year. And if you're just looking for just an introduction to uh, not really job coaching, but sort of self-coaching and self-direction to give you a sense of what you don't know, um, give you, I think that what Colliers Your Parachute is, is tried and true and is a good opportunity um, just to get exposed to real fundamental qualities about um, career and job search. So this is a lot of things that lead into coaching for a lot of people is they have that kind of, uh, of experience. Um, I'm going to walk through just the process that I went through in my coaching experience uh, through a personal personal vision journey, and it comprised um, some, some different experiences and exercises that were um, for a linear thinker like me, I'm an introverted linear thinker, very analytical. Um, I, I, I appreciated this particular process, this ability to not make me be that way, but it didn't feel bad. I didn't feel guilty for being an introvert or being, you know, linear thinker, analytical. Um, each of these processes was weeks and weeks and months of, of exhausting activity to get completed. And I'll walk you through what that looked like at the end. This is the journey I went on. Um, it's based upon this book here, uh, Unique from Willa Mancini. I don't know if it's backwards or not, but this is the book that I used. Um, and by the way, Clarity Spiral is also um, a book that I have. So if you're on the call today and you'd like to have a free copy of the Clarity Spiral, um, you can also ask Susie because she happens to be going through this herself and her own experience. I highly recommend it. So moving on, this is the clarity spiral process that I went through. Courage to know, experience to grow, value to show, risk to go. I love the, it, it's like a preacher. I worked in ministry for a lot of my years and this sounds like a preacher talking with his outline in his sermon. So I love the clarity spiral. Um, it, it both went to 
heights of clarity looking from a mountaintop perspective and it went to the depths of the ocean looking at and or the microscope looking at really detailed things that are deep deep down below that you may not like to always get to but it's important for for me to get clarity is to go high as i can and low and deep as i can the next process i went through was this uh past sweet spot summary which comprised three different components um, a passion circle an ability circle inventory and then a context circle and uh, one of the things that my coach would always ask me when we get together usually was tell me where how's your energy how's your energy where are you getting energy from and i just I was always intrigued with that question because it, it's very subjective but the repeated asking of that question over time reminded me of my passion, what fuels me the most, because it's those times that you're being fueled that give you the energy to do all the things that I need to be doing. So this comprised some activities that uh, are on the left side and then the ability circle, uh, once, and by the way, you do need to start with passion. You do need to figure that part out first. I did need to go to abilities next terms of what I can do. And I'm an assessment junkie, just like Doug Fertel and others. I love assessments. I've done them all that I can think of. Um, and then finally, the context. Where does this combination of what I'm fueled by and what I can do really well get the best impact? That's a wonderful, exciting process to get a sense of certainty. And uh, it increases your confidence in where you want to work and where you're pursuing next. Next part of the process for me is this personal vision frame, being able to articulate your identity. This is the part that is very kind of the getting into the throes of the deep muck of taking all this information that you got in the first section of these sweet spot summary, getting to that part where I'm realizing what only you can do. And a lot of this is based from Psalm 139 and other scriptures to really kind of clarify that you are so unique. There will never be another Jim McFarland, Susie Gilliland, or a bot. Dominique, you are that spe special and that it's critical that we allow God to use us because he'll never make another one of us. We're a one of a kind. And so being able to articulate these irreducible questions of life, I loved. Just just bowling it down to the bottom. What, what am I here to do? We've got to start there. And it's part of this frame. If you'll notice the, um, the little icons here sort of create a picture frame and we're working on each side of a picture frame. And the first part is what am I here to do, which is my life call or my you know mission, that's the frame component. Uh, the next thing is um, what or why am I doing it? And that's a very threatening question. It's It, it uncovers your real motivation and your real motives and it, your real uncertainty and your real doubt and your real, I don't know. Um, which is the values, and that's part of our life orientation of life core. And then the next question, how am I doing it? How do you take what you're here to do and why do you do it to how? What's the practical of strategy? Um, I, I've, and you probably have seen this too. A lot of things that are out there really start with strategy, and there are lots of how-tos, and they a lot of things don't cover necessarily the mission and values they start with strategy and you build off of that and for a lot of people they find that to be a very unfulfilling experience because you don't get these fundamental questions ir these irreducible questions of life answered first we and you so you can't start with the how and another thing that i love is this when am i successful this life score when am i successful because i don't care what you think in terms of success for you it's what do i think is success for me that's what the only thing that matters is when am I successful and how do I discern them, determine the measures of this? When I was working in ministry for about 15 years, this is one of the frustrations that I experienced often in church settings and church staff and boards is they have a hard time wanting to discuss success, let alone being able to measure it. Um, other than people, people in the pews, baptisms, uh, you know, people at programs, there's a lot of churches that do a poor job of measuring, let alone measuring success. So not to belabor that point, but I have a lot of that in my background and it's part of my part of my values in terms of measure. It's it's critical. I mean, I'm not going to move on until I have a clear measure of how things are going. And then finally, vision proper, where is God taking me is the is the second half of life. It's the next half of my life. And so when you look at this 
picture below, this is a tremendously great visual for me. I'm a visual person is you take this life score, life core steps and call. Once you have that, you know, outline, then you're looking at life plan, which is the outside and out front. And that's what leads to the future. Once we've gotten the, the frame discussed and figured out, then we move into the future and we don't start into future till we have the frame done. It's like uh, in, in Ephesians and Galatians, when Peter and Paul talks about looking into the mirror, I see just a glimpse of what is real, but yet when I'm, you know, I'll be, I will be fully known later on. And so this ability, when you look in the mirror, you're looking at a reflection and, and you see everything behind you. But when you look out a window, like I'm looking out a window right now, you see everything out in front of you. And so being able to look in a mirror and look at reflectively backwards into your life from birth to today is critical in order to look into the future out the window to tomorrow. Because the Bible doesn't say that we're guaranteed even tomorrow, let alone our next breath, but it's still critical for us to be, as Paul says, to strain forward to what is ahead, what lies ahead, forgetting what is behind, pressing on, and that's part of the thing I like about this process for me was it focused on, you know, we went to the Grand Tetons a couple of years ago um, and the mountains are huge. And I just try to imagine what's beyond those mountains. And that's part of vision is can you create what that looks like? The background is when you're driving down the road and you see that mountain is you can't quite ma make it out, but you've got a sense of it, what it might be. And as you get closer, you're to the mid ground, things get more and more clear. Eventually you see a signpost up ahead, next stop, the twilight zone, and you have the foreground. So that's one of the things I liked in terms of future thinking that was contextual for me, that was linear at the same time, and it made sense. And then the timeline for that below is what I'm currently pursuing. I have a three-year timeline, a one-year, a 90-day, and a this week, and I'm going to give you some of the in the weeds of what that looks like. And this process took about a year to a year and a half for me. Now I'm in the life-making cycle. Um, every week on, I'm in the reflecting cycle, expanding my perspective of God's author, authorship in my life in the macro level and assessing my progress in the micro level. At four o'clock every Sunday, I do a weekly reflection. It takes me about 30 to 45 minutes. It's the same every week and I've done it all year. And yes, I'm proud of myself. And then we have um, some daily allocations of giving your energy, attention, resources, and love each day to make your most meaningful life. And so every day when I get up, I'm reminded of, I've got something on my outlook. How am I allocating time today? Has God showed up since last night and prompted me to look at something that may not be on the calendar that I need to allocate? And that's a critical question to start the morning. Quarterly. I do 90-day contextual goals for long-term aspirations and milestones for short-term priorities. I celebrate the wins. I don't beat myself up when I didn't get something done. It's about making progress, not perfection. And then finally, on an annual basis, I'm going to have my first retreat this November to articulate um, and redefine my self-understanding of God's design in and the call on my life, because he may be wanting to shift me a little bit and move the rudder. This is one of the uh, processes that the exercise went through is my role map. Um, I have four storylines and um, my first storyline is called feeling ahead. Um, and my second storyline is binding ties. My third storyline is resource zone. And my fourth is recreational companion. And so in a practical sense, every single thing that I participate in every day falls under one of these four storylines. And every decision I choose not to do is because it doesn't fall under a storyline. So every 90 days, I get to focus on a different role under feel ahead and then a different, you know, even more specific role. Right now, for example, my dad is just in early stages of, de of dementia. And so mm -hmm. I'm falling in under the role as son and supporter or memory maker. And so I'm spending very much intentional time focusing on making memories with my dad because he's in early stages of dementia. And I want that to be an intentional focus the next 90 days. And then after that 90 days, I may have to share shift to care provider as a son. 
So that's the neat thing about the way these storylines work and operate for me. It'll help me to, to focus on a role that I play and gives me intense attention and energy to things that, that need to be focused on. This is the, uh, the, the proof in the pudding, I guess, for me, it's the end of product. Uh, when all is said and done, what did all this coaching give you, Jim? It gave me, a, it gave me my life in one piece of paper. Um, it took all the strenuous, exhaustive activity and it put it into one place. And you'll notice that my, my vision frame is out here on the top. My life call, life core, life steps, life score are over here. Um, the core values were really fun for me. Um, I love value stuff, individual values, corporate values, shared values. I'm a values per, I, I, and I will fight anybody. We, we will go to fisticuffs if anybody thinks that core values aren't, aren't that important or aren't essential. They're critical. And any coach who doesn't want to talk core values, I wouldn't consider. I would ask them their opinion on their core values and what they think of it. My storylines are at the top. Um, those generally don't, don't, they haven't changed yet. I, it took me a while to get to the, the storylines that my coach and I felt were most re reflective of the differences in each because um, I wanted laser sharp differences in each storyline and I didn't want to overlap or gray area because it needed to be consistent. One thing I will mention is I was very worried about my zoning resources business being too much of my identity and my time because it's, I think for a lot of professionals, we tend to, you know, where are, you know, who, who are you? What do you do is always the first thing. And what we do is nine to five or, you know, our job. And it's that thing that we spend time doing. And I don't want zoning resources to be its own storyline. So it is, I, I switched it and called it resource zone because I created my company so that it can actually fund all the other storylines and other people's storylines. And it's so exciting to do this. Um, I exist to honor God and help others by living next. And my life call is to harvest stories to reap God's next chapter together. Um, it, one of the things I learned in ministry very early and continually is the most important part in every ministry and every believer in every church is their story. And the sooner you can get to your story, the better you will be, I think, in honoring God and fulfilling your own identity. And it shapens and sharpens your perception of what God's calling you to and beckoning you to. And so I love to harvest stories. And I, my wife and I and my kids went to a Jordan Peterson event a couple of months ago, and he talked about from the book of Abraham that he believes God is calling us to an adventure. And if you're not living your life as an adventure, you're not living it in, in terms of risk, as Matthew 5 talks about. God is a God of risk. If you're not risking an adventure with what you do, then Satan's not going to bother you. Um, you know, he'll leave you alone. So there's this constant strain that I can exercise where you're constantly risking and constantly having an adventure and you're, you know, you're doing things that you may not normally do because, hey, I know I go line dancing about every Tuesday with my wife and I never would have done that, but it fits my recreational companion storyline. It's one of my 90 day goals. And so, um, and I, and I have it on my daily, my weekly cheat, cheat uh, when I go through and talk about that and. So life call, life core is the values, and then life steps are, I can't see it quite in my screen here, but those are, those are the things I'm focusing on now. Three years out, I have a bunch of vivid descriptions of uh, what life is going to be like. We've been working on our personal promised land. We're looking for five plus acres. I'm inviting families or individuals that share our values to purchase property together. Um, it's, it's a very regular goal. Um, it's part of my one-year goal by December of this year. Here are each of the things that are going to be happening. Um, I'm going to have an offer made on my property. I want to have a financial plan for zoning resources, my parents with their health care, myself. Um, I want a zoning resources this next chapter ready with a part-time or full-time integrator. I need to hire somebody full-time. Um, and we take a big step towards the 10-90-90-10 uh, split. That one of my goals is within uh, a year, I'd like to be um, shifting my 90% of my focus on zoning resources to 10%. And then I need to hire people for me to be able to do that. And then Annette having a vocational transition is another 
process. Um, I, I don't want her to have to work. And so we're working on a strategy to, to, not, to allow her not to do this. So the, uh, the, you'll notice it's not a perfect process. I did not have 12 conversations with people having vision conversations on the personal promise land the opportunity. I have nine completed and I have another one set for next week. So I'm still pursuing that. Um, but I tell you the intensity that you have with things when you put them on paper and I mean, it just trumps, it's like in Euchre, it's the right power. It's trumping any other thing that kind of conflicts with your time and things you give up that you normally wouldn't think about. You just, you, you got it out and you get back to that goal. And it's amazing how much better you feel about following through with that. Uh, one of my goals was having monthly executive coaching here at the bottom. Um, trying to have a thousand dollars to invest. I, I invested it to my children. I wanted to practice uh, the Matthew five capital um, stewardship kind of perspective. And I, and I invested in a thousand, entrusted a thousand dollars with each of my children and asked them to steward that on my behalf to see how they could help bring value um, to me as the, as the owner. And then noble volunteering is one of my other goals to integrate two to three volunteer roles, which is why I've been so intensely involved with noble. It's on my life plan. And then finally promised land to have these conversations is one of those other activities. Here's the weekly snapshot. These are the, every week I have the date reset is my 90 day goal. Here are my storylines and you're either thriving, surviving or reviving. Every week you're either, I'm coming out of a slump. I'm just keeping my head above water or man, I've got, we're, we're trucking. We are all five cylinders or whatever. And that, that shifts around a little bit. And it just generally, do you feel like you're ahead of schedule or behind schedule? That's what I love about it. Just, I, it's not rocket science. It's not, it's just personal right now. I feel like I'm at, I've been at a negative two for quite a long time. And I just recently moved to negative one. That's how I feel about it. Unexpected outcomes, unexpected obstacles I encountered this week. Every week, there's another unexpected obstacle. Even if it's a good thing, if you were distracted by going to a Sheets Grand opening on a Friday and it didn't fit a storyline, Jim, did you, should you have gone to that? Maybe you should have gone to something else with that. So even fun things can be uh, unexpected or expected. They're obstacles sometimes if they're not filling your storyline. And then a new idea how I will approach this next week and then finally, a four sentence prayer. God, you are, um, move this thing a little bit. Thank you for guide me in and empower me too. I love the questions. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Every week I answer each of those four questions. Sometimes they're the same. Sometimes they're a little bit different. So, um, so I'm gonna pause for a second, Susie. This is sort of my observations of everything, but I can stop and we can do Q and A if you want for a little bit. And I can ask answer questions about my process if you guys want to ask me that, or I can get into this and sort of walk through the coaching part itself. So, what would you suggest? You're muted. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions right now? Is this a is this a combination of assessments that you've gone through that's that's uh, giving you this, or is this just one? Oh, it's a lot of assessments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of tools that got me to this point. Is this from reading the books, or is this from a personal coach taking you through this process? I started with the book. I started reading the book, and that's that's what led me to decide I needed a coach because this this the way that Will Mancini wrote his book so resonated with me in my personality and my idea i just and the fact that he's an engineer added a thousand percent credibility to him because he's not a preacher he is a preacher he's he works with churches but he has street cred he has he's had a real job he's worked on real projects and he's dealt with that real world and so i appreciate that perspective but reading the book was a start and then uh taking some of the, the, the they, they did a really good job of marketing little short versions of their book like the Clarity Spiral was one of them. I did that first and went, gum, this is a great little tool. <laughs> and I like tools anyway. And then I went, then there was another tool. So I went, this is another tool in my little bag of tools because I'm always finding another tool. And, I, and they were much better than a lot of tools I used. Eventually, um, 
and I had wanted to network with him when I was in full-time ministry about a dozen years ago because I thought he'd be a great guy to help me in, in my role as a staff person in a church. And then when that ended, um, his focus was on church unique. What he hit, this book came after his, his church unique stuff. So that's eventually I ended up hiring him as a coach because of all of the pre-work that I did. I figured he'd be good to kind of solidify what I've already attempted on my own. I think no, I see some similarities between what you're talking about here and what we did with the personal plan, the VT, the personal VTO process there. Um, so it's neat to see the differences and 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 certainly pull out some new areas. You, sorry, Corey, go ahead. I was just going to say I don't have any questions. It's um, really really good though. I'm resonating with me, so I'd say continue on. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to make sure that everybody knows I'm not trying to push Will Mancini or Church Unique or Unique or player, anything like that. I, I'm just wanting to share my own experience with this coaching thing. So this is sort of my hang ups I had um, and, about this whole process and to start with. Number one, I'm cheap. Um, I'm not. That's it's just the reality. I'm, going to, I'm being very transparent here. I'm cheap. And I, I like to say I'm frugal. My wife says, no, you're cheap. Um, so I don't like spending money if I don't have to. And I also had a negative perception of people that were coaches or said they were coaches, just like those who can't do teach or those who can't do coach. Um, like, can't you get a real job? Why do you have to be a coach? And that's, that's my, that's on me. You know, that's my issue. Um, taking advantage of the free stuff. I, you know, I would, I would try to find every free link and free thing or free book or free trial I could get and steal whatever I could find to, to use for myself to learn it, which is, you know, it's like grabbing from the whatever bin at the store. You don't, you know, you know what you're going to get discombobulated, disjointed, neat little fun things, but weren't all connected. I was also suspicious of people who were always marketing their, you know, are marketing their book, marketing their, their thing. Just, it just felt like they're, Every morning they're sending an email out about some new thing. And I just was like, I was get, I'd get annoyed. Like, come on, why do you have to keep sending me this stuff out? So um, remember, this is my issue. Okay. This is not yours. This is how I was my struggle. Um, and I felt some people were keeping coaching close to the vest when they were getting coaching. They didn't want to tell me much about it. They wouldn't give me their real thoughts or opinions. I don't think they wanted, they didn't want to taint their, coaching experience that they had or hadn't because it may or may not be good. They didn't want to throw a person under the bus. So, um, and I also hated the bait and switch feeling when I'd go to a free dinner or an event and find out, Oh, they just want me to, you know, take advantage of this $6,000 coaching package and for 495, if you sign up tonight, like I'm done, I ain't spending four, you know, you lost me there. So I, that was my issues and there's probably others, but, you know, I, but my conversion happened. I'm going to be, this is the positive side when I, um, because I had, a, I think because I invested with Will in his stuff and I saw that he wasn't just trying to sell. I mean, he had, sure, he sold books and he sold materials and he sold his coaching, but his focus was more on churches, not individuals as much. And I wasn't sure if I wanted a personal coach um, or a business coach or I wasn't exactly, and I felt he had a good combination of both. Plus he was, he'd been in church work. So he had street cred and I, and he worked in ministry and I'd worked in ministry and he's, you know, I have a lot. So I have a lot of commonality with Will Mancini and he and I have similar personalities and I just, that was a great fit. I also thought that I'm, you know, I had just turned 50 and I've had enough life and my kids were empty nesting, you know, they were leaving and I feel like I had enough real world experience and suffered enough firings and terminations and job frustrations and stuff that, you know, I want to, I want to focus on the rest of the life to be positive. Um, and that's one of the fun things about one of the processes is you get to create chapters in your life. You get to take your life and create five chapters and I'm living my last chapter five right now. And that's another exciting thing is to see the context of what God's led you through to your, your age today. And as you look at it in the context of chapters in a book and to imagine, wow, you've got one more chapter left, Jim. What's your, what are you going to write that chapter as? And my, my last chapter is called Homeward Bound. And the rest of my chapters all have to do with different components of home. Um, I'd gone through Saddleback, Willow Creek, 
Christian Swartz's Natural Church Development Leadership Training Network, and then Church Unique. I'd looked at things through the lens of of helping helping to provide life call and life purpose in the context of church, because I've always believed that people who are part of a local church should be getting this kind of help. They should be getting this kind of discipleship and this kind of experience and and uh, accountability. Not just to say you don't just bring people to Jesus, but you need to learn who Jesus is in you. And what is your unique call? And I think it's the role of the local church to do that. And unfortunately, a lot of churches don't. But Will is somebody who does. And I appreciated that investment. Um, what a coach did for me, um, I, skin in the game, I can't say enough. When I started paying for this, I'm like, I'm in it. You know, I got, I'm not, I don't want to waste my money because I'm cheap. I, I'm going to get, I, I'm, I divided the amount and went, how much per day am I spending for this? I just lost $40 today, Jim, because you didn't do this thing. Crap. You know, I got to that sort of attitude. Um, it didn't fix all my weaknesses, but he, but, but Will calls me out when I'm not following through. And he just is reminding me, look, I'm not going to beat you up, dude, but this is what you said. This is what you wanted. And, and it didn't happen. What's going on? You know, he, so it, there's a little bit of that, you know, pat on the back, but pick you up. He was a cheerleader, but he didn't blow smoke up my, you know what? He did a good job of that. He didn't tell me, he, he, he wasn't, you know, being like a lot of celebrity folks being told how great they are and just, Jim, you're so wonderful. You did such a great job. He didn't do that. Now he would, he would also focus on things that I didn't think were that important, explain why they're so important and why he's so excited. I'm like, really? So getting that life plan snapshot part done was that big a deal? Yes, and here's why. And he'd go all on and on about it. Like, oh, okay. The process was exhaustive, not in terms of just um, hard to do, but thorough. If you're looking for a coach, you want the process to be thorough. You might start in with just trying to be a fix it. I need some help with this piece of my business or piece of my life, and that's fine. But make sure that it's an exhaustive process or they can refer you to somebody is from birth through death. That's, again, my, you know, my uh, staying home, leaving home, well, you know, homeless and then homebound, my chapters. That whole process from birth through death is a great, great piece. Solution, I think I'm like, I'm watering like crazy. And then helping my business. Uh, help place my business in perspective in my life and then ele elevating and deepening my clarity. Those are the things that, that coaching did for me. Any questions so far I'll, before I keep rambling? Okay. Really good points. Thanks for taking us through all of that. It helps us identify right. different parts. So aspects. if you're, if you're thinking of getting a coach or you think co you could use a coach, I would start with speaking with people who have received coaching for sure. Um, any kind of coaching. I would talk to people who have paid money for it, whether it's what, regardless of the amount of money or how often they're paying the money. What did you, did you get what you paid for? Do you, you know, do you think you did ask for the resume of the person who, has the service not just don't just look at their website you know i asked will for his resume and then i also asked him for two or three satisfied customers i need to talk to because he had a lot of people in churches that he's worked with and different people i'm like you know i want to talk to somebody in the for-profit business arena that you have personally coached i'd like to talk to them directly on how they helped you and if a coach isn't willing to do that mm, don't be afraid to negotiate terms reflective of your budget. Um, I guess you'll have to decide what your budget is and you'll have to decide what is a, what's a reasonable amount of money. But I do think you can be, you know, you do get what you pay for. If you're paying a certain, you know, $50 a month for something and you're getting a book and you, and he's ch checking in with you, that's okay. If that's what you want. But if you're paying, you know, hundreds of dollars a month, for something, then that's a different, that's a different kind of investment. And the, the time that a coach offers you is worth what you pay them because you're not just paying them for the time they're spending with you directly. It's for the other time they're doing things for you before and after their session with you. Um, consider your investment as an offering to God's investment in you. That's one thing I had to work through is the stewardship of God's resources because I was living in poverty 
uh, most of my life I've been in poverty. And so when I got to where I was living in abundance financially, I had to think about my stewardship of what God's doing with that abundance and making, not being afraid to what I would have said is, a, you know, an awfully large amount of money for coaching for that's not real tangible. It's not paying my water bill or my car payment or the flat tire or the water heater. You know, it, it's, it's sort of an ambiguous investment, but understanding it's an investment in yourself. Ask for an opt out if there's if it's not a good fit. Don't be afraid to do a 90 day trial. Um, ask for a couple of free months of something. Uh, and I think the biggest thing I would encourage is to marinate in the process that your coach offers. And I love the word marinate. It's my word. It's what I would describe it. And it's any any food that you eat. If it hasn't been marinated, it hasn't truly been exhausted. And I think that the process that you marinate in is not one you're trying to get through because some of these steps were a pain in the butt and I hated it. When I had to go through and look at the negative stuff in my life and the, and the trauma in my life and the bad stuff and the sin and the, you name it, I hated having to do that, but it was critical as part of the process. And the other illustration that I think that coaching does is for me, it's like painting a wall. Um, when you go to the store and you buy cheap paint and you start to paint a wall, you have to do what? You have to go over that wall again and again. And when, and when it dries, it, it kind of reveals how little you actually covered. And you see you go over it again. But when you buy a good paint and that's good quality, you don't have to go over it more than one or two times. But there's still, even the best paint, you can't necessarily do in one coat. And the best coaching process is something that's not going to be in one coat. I, there's many times that you'll get into a process of the of the coaching where you just hit a wall and you have to stop, walk away and and go back and work another process. And so I did a lot of back and forth of the exercises because it was exhausting and it was just difficult mentally. And then finally, your uh, I can't read the last one here. Uh, your calling. What's the last one say? I can't tell. All right. Your, oh, your calling and purpose are not your spouse's, but your spouse is part of your story. So just remember, if you hire a coach, um, the coach is for you. And unless it's a relational coach or a relationship coach, you're hiring a coach for you and you alone. And the context of your spouse and your kids and others needs to be, I'll say this secondary, not in a demeaning way, but it does need to be secondary because if everybody in your family, you know, it's just you and God. The only relationship that matters is you and God and your spouse is part of that. But um, that's took me a bit to, cause I wanted to include Annette and her, what she likes and who she's like in my coaching stuff. I'm like, hang on a second. This isn't her story. This is my story. So how does she fit into that? Making sure that uh, her dreams, her dreams are not my dreams, but yet part of my recreational companion storyline is to help her fulfill her dream. And that's where I get excited is when I um, when I do meet do things in her love language. When I focus on things with her that are reflective of her relationship, those things, while fulfilling her own journey, are you know part of my story. And that's where it fits in the context. But that's it. Well, very good, Jim. I uh, um. I recently just started with a coach, you know, in the last, in the last few months. And uh, initially I didn't look at it the way you just said it, as far as, um, you know, that's, that's really God working through that person, right. To, to, to help strengthen something or to help reveal something or whatever in you. So you can be better, right. At, at what you, he wants you to do, right. And what you want, he wants you to accomplish. So, you know, looking at it from that clarity, I think is 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 very good. But again, um, it's thinking and picking the right person, you know, and the right experience and and what your goals are going into that. You know, for me, it was kind of a happenstance thing. This person I knew uh, is, is a person that's a good friend of somebody at the deck, and uh, she just happened to reach out to me at the right time, and she gave me a free hour. Right. So I'm like, uh, you yeah, know, normally I would have said, no, I don't really have time. But this time I said, you know what? I'll give her that free hour. 
And then that free hour, I realized, okay, you know, I think, I think this will be worthwhile to, to go through. So, so the Lord definitely prompted me, you know, in ways to, uh, to kind of get that started. I didn't seek it out. Um, but he said here, you know, and, and, uh, uh, but but thinking about it the way you just did is him saying, here, I want you to go <laughs> through this. And here's the person I want you to go through it with, you know. So that's uh, that was clarity to me. Uh, but as I've talked to you before, you know, I've certainly I run into a lot of coaches and we all do. In business, you run into a lot of coaches that are out there doing different things, whether it's personal business life you know i was a i was a soccer coach for 26 years you know so lots of coaches out there um you know and uh, i've certainly seen ones that have no business being coaches and certainly have seen and, and been a part of some that are outstanding uh at what they do so uh it's it's certainly certainly a, a great a great business and a great uh offering to society right but you do have to you do have to explore and make sure you're picking the right person so i like your 90 day trial you know maybe get a couple freebies up front you know those kind of things to kind of to kind of test the waters very nice we have a few minutes so I'll, it'd be nice if each person would share a takeaway or an aha something that meant something to them today Sure. I'll go next. <laughs> I really liked your, um, the photo, the picture frame where you have your foreground. All right, what am I going to do like today or this week? And then a little bit farther and then the mountains and then what's behind the mountains. Like, you know, there's something there behind the mountains, even though you can't see it, you're still looking forward to it. Um, I, uh, I can feel that. So, um, yeah, your your list at the end of all of the the takeaways points there um, resonate with those also. So, um, yeah, thanks for sharing. Sure. Yeah, I like to just uh, tag along with what you were saying. You know about you know interviewing you know the prospective coach. You know finding out you know uh, what's their background, how much success have they had, who they worked with. Um, you know, as a business owner you know, I get inundated with requests, you know, and I, I look at people's profile and I see that they've been doing this for three months and it's yeah. just like, really, you're an expert in this? Come on, you know, like, no, thank you, you know, I, and I don't know if it's because I am working the rec recruiting or what, but I, I bet you I get at least 10 a day people wow. trying to solicit. It's ridiculous between that and, um, you know, people telling me they can market and 10x my business and do this and do that. And it's like you said, it's just blowing smoke. So I, I've become very cynical. Well, I am reading the Clarity Spiral right now. And just as I told Jim yesterday, it's, it was kind of messing with my head early on. Um, but I pushed through it and keep reading. And, and now I'm, I haven't finished yet. I'm at section three, but it does build upon itself. And what I see in there, too, is starting from your identity, kind of like Noble, starting with your identifying your purpose, um, the two go hand in hand. So that's been really helpful. I do get um, frustrated or discouraged because it is realize what only you can do is one of the things you said. And, and I see people who are talented in this area. Maybe it's marketing like Corey or my son has a very specific focus in basketball and coaching and they just live into it and don't look back. And I don't feel like I have those kind of skills or talents. I'm just kind of a utility player. So I'm not quite sure where that identity or purpose fits in, but, um, but I do have lots of things in mind for the future. So what really stood out to me was that picture frame. Um, and you can't start with how to do things. You have to start with who and why and realize that. So I, I really enjoyed that. I, I wrote down, don't look into the future until you have the frame done. And I think those core values, that identity, that purpose, those, those things that shape you, I have to look through and find that sweet spot through that focus. And so that's my takeaway is putting together that framework. And, and of course I like reading the books and take all the advantage of all the free things you can do. Mm -hmm. Um, and right now I'm not in a place to figure out which type of coaching I may need, but hopefully, like you said, God will present it 
like Chad said, when it's when it's time and I'm ready. So so thank you for this. Very, very rewarding today. Anybody have any other comments or takeaways you want to share before we close? Okay. Well, I think too, you know, we're we're um we can all benefit by whether it's a coach, a mentor, you know, whatever, what you know, whatever that might be, different, different titles put in front of in front of somebody, right? And I think it's just a realization of of the gifts that God is has bestowed upon us and the fact that, you know, instead of uh related to our our speaker this weekend, you know, instead of trying for perfection in everything that we do, which is obviously impossible for us, right? right. Um, that we start finding, and, and the earlier you learn, learn this, you know, you start finding other people that complement, um, you know, your gifts, right? And to be able to work with them and understand them. And I think, I think I, I like what you said too, Jim, as far as churches could, could really benefit their congregation um, by, by doing more assessments and doing more, you know, I think working genius is good because they're yeah. again teaching people how to work with each other. Right. And typically you look at somebody as oil and water, um, and oil and water are the best combinations to have in putting two people together because the oil is going to contribute and the water is going to contribute, but neither one, you know, is, is, is the other, and you need both, you know, to, to yeah. succeed, right? And so the better people in the church can learn those kinds of things, I think, is is real value, you know. And and so I think I think it's an acceptance too that you need multiple coaches or mentors or whatever. And whether they're free or it's somebody that has a business doing it or whatever, those are invaluable. And and it's something that it's that really people need to look out for and accept. And, and, uh, you know, kind of, kind of sit down at, like you do, and I'm not good at this, but sit down like you do and say, you know, lay out kind of who you are and then just say, what do I need in there? You know, what, what gaps do I need? So what types of coaches and mentors do I need to fill into those, into those spaces to make me, you know, fulfill, uh, you know, my purpose that much better, you know? Um, and so this is great. This is a great topic for I think people to to really understand and then you know okay what are the next steps and and noble being able to maybe help them with that is I think a there again another gift that we can provide yeah and Chaz you mentioned kind of the key is re, when you got decided to choose a coach it was referred those relationship referrals are what kind of add the credibility to a person and and like you said too it's sort of a godly divine appointment that he has somebody in mind that he wants to you and it's a it is sort of like a discipleship if they're a believer not that you can have non-christian coaches but to me certainly i want to start with a believer in that context and i will probably integrate coaches that might not be but they're exceedingly good at you know an aspect of bookkeeping that i need to have for my business right now or marketing or something yeah Exactly. And the, and the young lady that I'm working with, um, you know, right now is a spiritual person, uh, grew up, you know, Catholic, but I wouldn't say that she is a believer now, you know, so hmm. there again, God's put me into that position for one reason and, and for me to benefit, you know, in another reason. So I, so I, I I'm right there with you in, in that regard. So. Excellent. Well, here, uh, Chaz mentioned Lene Pisano, who's our speaker, guest speaker this Saturday uh, at Oasis City Church for a Noble Live event, which will also be um, held online. So you can register for that. Lene is just a, a fabulous person. We got to meet with her and talk with her in preparation for the event. And um, just a high level business leader and a lot to offer. And she's already praying that her stories of her journey will somehow connect with your journey and just uh, propel you on uh, for that purpose and call in, in your life. She, she you'll, you'll be glad you participated in that. And then our next forum, like this one, Noble Knowledge Forum, will be our speaker will be Jordan Aker. 
uh, biblically responsible investing. That'll be a true gift for all of you who want to participate in that one. So make sure you register for that from the new Noble website. Um, let's see. Bye. If I could just add also, um, Lene struggles from pe perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And uh, she struggled with that most of her life. But uh, uh, she's really, you know, she wrote a book about how to deal with it. And we're gonna talk about that on Saturday too. So um, so she's she's gonna bring a lot of light. She's coming to us from a leader perspective, not as a business owner. She's not a business owner. She's coming to us more from a leader, a mentor, uh, a coach uh, perspective, an influencer to others. So, uh, uh, so she's gonna be really good. Super. Well, again, you have the, the Noble YouTube channel where you can watch this segment again and any of our past segments. And then the QR code on the right is the Noble Spiritual uh, emails. We send out three a week created by our partner and leadership, Jeff Elder uh, of Business God's Way. And you will want to sign up and receive those words of encouragement that will come your way each week. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jim. This was very insightful. Yep. Appreciate you all. Thank you, Jim, very much. You're welcome. Words of encouragement.